Hello, good afternoon, dear friends. I am in Brazil, Roberto. And we are here for once again, a talk of a series, Gabriel Delan. That is a pleasure for us to talk about someone very important for the Spiritist teachings in the world. Hi, Roberto, say hello and I will present to you. Hi, Elsa, hi, everybody. Glad to be here with you again. Yes. Perhaps this is strange that I'm here now, but Munir has a problem with electrical problems, no power in his uh, borough. So uh, fortunately, I am here, so I can we can present uh, Roberto. Welcome, Roberto. Once again to our series you did before 2021 about Leon Denis. That was great. Everyone appreciated so much. And now we are here presenting you again. As you know, all for the new ones, uh, Roberto is a bachelor degree in philosophy from USP, Sao Paulo, master's degree in business administration from PUC, Sao Paulo, PUC, the universities, and also degree in business administration. Uh, activities in FESP that Roberto is the president of uh, FESP as uh, Sao Paulo Spiritist Federation is one of the most powerful and biggest one in the world as a federation for Spiritist teachings. So he is president from 2019-2021 and again 2022-2024. to Director of Continuing Education Courses Training, Director of the Spiritist Philosophy Course Training as well, uh, Writer of the Sower, the Sower Magazine from FES, fluent in English and Spanish. So if you want Roberto, talk to him and listen now this important moment that is a, it's a big effort for people to um, prepare lives like that in English, Roberto. So thank you for accepting and be with us. Okay. Now, uh, I will leave Roberto talking and I add the stream for you, Roberto. Okay. Okay, thank you, Elsa. Thank you again for this opportunity to be here this year to talk about the, uh, the works of Gabriel Delan. We will be seeing today his book, which is called Spiritism Before Science. Actually, we will be seeing only the three first parts of the book because the book is very huge. And then we are going to see the first part about uh, the existence of the soul. Then the second part, uh, Gabriel Delan uh, talks about magnetism, just to prove that the soul is uh, independent of the body, our body. And then in the third part, he g gave us, uh, when he wrote the book, some proofs of the immortality of the soul. We will not be seeing today part four, which is about the peri-spirit or our spiritual body, and the fifth part, which is about the mediumship. Then, um, Let's start then by the first part. <clears throat> uh, Gabriel Delaney starts in the chapter one of the first part by asking, do we have a soul? And then he, he actually, he, he gives us a, a, a historic, uh, the history of this, this um, concept of the soul and uh, about this question about do we have or not a soul? And so he says that the ancient imagining that man was composed of two distinct elements, the soul and the body. For example, Socrates, the famous philosopher who, he, who lived in the fifth century before Christ, he used to say that uh, man is composed of a soul and body. And then he used to say that the soul is the essence of the body because the soul is uh, the one that gives life to the body. The soul is the one uh, who thinks, uh, who, who wants, uh, who loves. And so 
the main the main part of the man let's say is on the soul body is only the instrument uh but then in our time uh delani says his time was the the 19th century by the end of the 19th century uh and beginning of uh, for uh, 20th century and he says that a new school he, he's talking about material materialism uh, holds that they they were wrong the ancient were wrong because we have only uh, uh man is only matter which means that we have only our body nothing more nothing about the soul so that's uh the 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 what he's is he's telling here about the materialism so therefore he wants to of, of course he, he was um a spiritist uh, um, uh, scholar and he wanted to prove to argument that what the materialists uh, were saying uh, was not uh, correct right so that's why he said that we want to examine if the arguments provided by the materialist have all the value attributed to them and he said that nothing interests us more uh, than knowing uh, then, then here he called to kardec you know? kardec said this uh, also knowing who we are we are where we are going and where we come from right so he started by uh, putting here the concept of the materialist materialistic theories so he says that the materialists established as a principle that in and around us we can only perceive the matter so we have our body and we, we can see uh, the other houses which we can see nature we can see the stars we can see you can perceive only matter and then nothing exists without matter so that there therefore we are only a matter so we have only our body and nothing more right and uh, he uh, he also mentioned that according to lavoisier the, the famous uh, french french chemist uh, now, Lavoisier used to say that in nature, nothing is created and nothing is lost. Everything is transformed. So matter, uh, we have a matter in, in, in nature with our body, for example. Our body, when we die, uh, the matter that composes our body decompose, And then the atoms that compose this our body um, are, are, are um, used, let's say, in new combinations so to uh, construct the other bodies in nature so everything is transforming that's what materialist uh, love love as he said right so uh, that's why the matter is always the same right? and uh, it is immutable eternal and inseparable from one of its properties which is force right? when we think about force we think about for example elect electromagnetism uh, about the gravity this kind of uh, forces, right, which uh, uh, are studied by by physics, and then uh, materialists uh, used to say that uh, forces designated by name such as God, soul, will, thought, would 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 be just uh, some properties of a matter, because there there really would not exist nothing uh, regarding God, soul, or things like that, right. So this is this was the materialist theories at uh, Delaney's time, right? So then he started by proving that the force is is not an attribute of matter. Force is independent of matter, and and for such purpose he goes to Newton, which was a great scientist, right, from the eight, uh, from the 17th to 18th century. So. He, uh, Delano says that according to Newton, a body abandoned to itself must remain eternally, either in a state of emotion, if it were it was in motion, or stay in, 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 in uniform rest. For example, if, if we can imagine a stone, for example, a rock, right? a rock is there, it stay in uniform rest at, in the place that it, it is, right? So, and the, by the other hand, if such body was in a state of emotion, 
and then it would stay eternally in motion. That, that, that's not very natural to us to, to, to grasp, right? Because if I, for example, roll a ball on the floor, in some point, uh, in some point, this ball stops, right? So that's what we have in our mind. But uh, here in physics, uh, Newton is imagining a situation where we don't, we do not have attrition because the reason the ball that we roll on the floor is sometimes it stops is because there is attrition from the floor on upon the ball. Right? Uh, Suppose uh, you can imagine small particles, small objects, which which make the ball uh, stopping, right? But if we uh, and if we didn't have any attrition, then that ball would would be rolled over indefinitely, right? So that's what Newton is saying here, uh, showing that uh, you know, by the vision of uh, uh, Delaney, that. If, force, uh, such force which uh, keeps uh, the, ba the body still on, the, on its place or keep it rolling definitely is something um, independent of the matter because if it, it were not independent either the body would stay rest or would be moving definitely but uh, we wouldn't have two different situations, right? So here's what Dylan is trying to prove here. So uh, that's why he says that the study of effects uh, leads us to view the world as formed by two uh, principles independent of each other, force and matter. Right? So force is independent of matter. So therefore, he says, the forces called God, soul, will have a real existence outside of a matter. So why he is mentioning here God, soul, will? It's because uh, we know that uh, in the example that I, I, I gave, uh, the ball in movement is is, is a physical uh, um, phenomenon, right? Phenomenon. But we also know that in the case of our body, for example, we move your, our body ourselves, right? If you, I try to, if I want to 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 raise my hand, then my my, my hand raise, right? So uh, there is a force which is acting upon uh, my body. So. And such force, uh, which in the case is the soul, uh, Delan says that it has a real existence outside of our body or outside of matter, right? Which compose our body. So that the, the matter or, or in the case our body is only the passive instrument on which um, uh, the, uh, we exercise our will, right? So that's uh, th this is the first argument from the land to, to prove that uh, uh, force independent of matter. And at the end of the day, he is trying to prove that it, there is some, something independent of the ma of matter, right? So in this case, he, he's, to, he's uh, proving that force is independent of matter. But of course, uh, what he, he really wants to prove is that there, there is another thing which is independent of the matter, which is the soul, right? Or independent of the body, which is the soul. So next argument is then he, he, he comes to the soul, right? So the soul or or to, 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 to our body. And he starts by talking about the brain and thought. So here he's talking about the body, but because he's mentioned the materialists, that say, say that the brain, the brain is the organ through which uh, thought manifests itself. Right? It means that uh, our physical brain is what produces thought. There is no soul right? in, our, in, in ourselves which is producing thought. Our brain produced by itself, right? So uh, the materialists used to compare uh, to say that uh, the, the same way as the the liver or liver produces bile to help our di digestion process of the food that we ate uh, in the same way the brain also produces thought right so this is uh, strictly materialist view of of, of our uh, thinking process right so uh then dylan says in some some little bit joking here, right? So this is like saying that the, uh, if, the, uh, if we think that the piano is the instrument that makes one hear melody, 
then the piano composes the melody, right? So it doesn't make any sense, of course, right? So, and uh, he concluded here by saying that certainly is that is, it is very difficult to explain how a material thing, the brain, can produce or can generate an immaterial action, which is thought, right? So uh, this, uh, this uh, is the way he's uh, trying to prove here that uh, it's not the brain that produces the thought, right? Produces thought, but uh, which is a material uh, thing. But is the soul, which is also an immaterial thing, right? So he uh, proceeds here with his uh, thinking, saying that, for example, um, he cites here the, the case of a madness, right? So madness normally is often followed by a considerable injury of the nervous center. Well, because if you have the central nervous system um, injured, then uh, we can we cannot think it correctly, right? But then he says that the science provides facts uh, of a, a huge alteration of a, the brain substance uh, and the, with no uh, slightest disturbance of intelligence. Well, what he's saying here, uh, the line in this case, right? He's saying that there are cases that we have um, some accident that cause injury in our brain, but uh, that does not um, affect our thinking capacity, right? So if, it, if the brain would produce thought, then if the brain is, is injured, then we, we would not be able to, 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 to think, right? So, uh, but that, that's not happening. So then it means that the production of thought is independent of the brain, right? which is a material thing. So that that that's why he says that the thought is not produced by the brain, and then uh, it's another argument here. So he he, he will go on here, uh, giving us giving us many arguments to prove that the soul is independent of a matter, right, of our body. The next argument from Belan is about the memory, right? So he says that one of the faculties of the soul. Uh, that most attracted the attention of philosophers and also psychologists right? and scientists was memory. Because uh, science already knew by the last time, well, Kardec already knew that the, our body renews most of this, its, its substance in a period, uh, in the case of here, Dylan says, in a period of 20 to 30 days. It means that every month, most of the the atoms, the molecules that compose our body are replaceable. And then, well, and how can we explain memory, right? So if the memory was uh, was only a material thing, then as the body is, uh, the, the elements of our body are replaced, then we would have lost the memory of everything that happened with us before, right? So uh, that's what he's, he's asking here, right? If, if we, if it did, this is true, the renewal of our body, how can we, in our mature age, uh, remember of what happened in our youth or even in our childhood, childhood right? So the answer, uh, of course, by the spiritist um, uh, side, is that it is because there is a principle in us that does not change, right? So our body changes, it changes at every moment, but the soul, does not change. So the soul is is the element from man, uh, of man that preserves the memory of the past events. So you see that he giving us lots of arguments to prove it, that uh, yeah, we have a soul, right? And then he says about the soul qualities. Um, if we think about the materialist uh, theories, um, if you are just a, a material, just a body, then such a theory would suppress the responsibility of our actives. Uh, because if you are um, incessantly renewing our, the molecules that compose our body, then we, we, th th there would, uh, when the, the molecules are replaced, th there, is, there is nothing left, uh, left uh, behind, right? So, in such case, he, he asks, uh, with what, what right could man be proud of his quality? 
if the guy is honest, if he is um, intelligent, if he is uh, sincere, if he is a good person, this would not have no value because uh, in the next month, everything has changed in that body, right? So if you, uh, that's why he says that if a man were just an unconscious plaything of physical chemical forces, which would be our atoms and molecules that compose our body, and then we would say, we would have to say goodbye to all noble things, right? So there would be no moral morality in us. There would, there would be no virtue, right? So, and virtue or vice, right? So so-called would have an, uh, no value, which does not make sense of course, right? So, and then what is the conclusion, right? So examining all the theories uh, so far, right? regarding all the, the, these arguments that Delanis uh, gave us. He, he, he says that of all of the theories, uh, uh, none, uh, none of, of these theories lead to us uh, to the certainty that, the, uh, this, the, that we, do, we do not have a soul, right? That the soul is not an entity. On the contrary, right? So uh, we, con we convince ourselves that the spirit or soul uh, we as a spirit or soul really exist, right? So then he adds, right? But now he, he mentioned his at his time, his book was written at the beginning of the 20th century, right? So now he says we have a powerful instrument of investigation to review uh, that uh, the existence of the soul, the magnet science, magnetic science, right? Which is something that Kardec was already studying at the middle of uh, the 19th century, right? Actually, it was studied uh, before Kardec, right? Since uh, the, well, since the ancient times, right? So, because Delano says in this book that um, the Hindus, the Egyptian, or uh, the Greeks already uh, using magnetism, right, to cure, or to heal, for example, from illness, right? Uh, when we call, uh, when we talk here about magnet, magnetism, we used to think about electromagnetism, uh, which is a physical force, right, uh, associated to matter. But in this case, the magnetism should think in another, uh, is, is, is have a different concept here, right? So magnetism, is something related to fluids. And, and then, uh, if you would think about magnetism, uh, it, it would be more um, useful here to think about the hypnotism, right? We will be talking about hypnotism, that, uh, uh, that is that influence that a person has upon another person, right? So to, to guide him on, on to, to to, to accomplish some acts, for example, we will be you will be seeing that, right? But just to introduce in here uh, this um, this uh, um, magnetism, hypnotism, with uh, closeness between these two concepts, right? Just for you to have an uh, an initial idea of what we are we are talking here, right? So. With magnetism, he says, Delan says, the soul is isolated from the body and manifests itself through impressive phenomena. So uh, we'll see now. That, that's why he has he has now the second part of the his book. He will talk about magnetism. Right? So in the second part, he started by talking, for example, about natural somnambulism. What is natural somnambulism? It's a particular case of a sleep, right? Because when we normally, normally when we are going to sleep at night, we sleep and then uh, get up from the bed, and uh, uh, only on 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 when when we wake up uh, not in the, the the day after, right? But the natural natural somnambulism is, is a particular case of sleep because in such case. The individual is there, is sleeping, is sleeping at his bed, but suddenly he 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 get up and he's not conscious of that, right? He's sleeping. He 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 get he gets up from 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 his bed. He walks asleep and performs uh, the same tasks he performs when awake, right? There are cases of uh, scientists, for example, which get up uh, at night from the bed, do some 
research in his laboratory, for example, then uh, go back to 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 to, uh, to bed, right? But all the all the time uh, the guy is, is sleeping; he's not awake, right? So that's natural somnambulism. So in such case, the people can uh, the person can write a work or a sermon, and in, in body is asleep; uh, he is not conscious. And uh, but to do that is necessary that the author move. So he must get up from the body, go to the table, write to what he wants to write, and then uh, get back from to, uh, to bed. Right. So uh, all of this uh, is sleeping. So that's why somnambulism is a case of sleep. Right. Particular because we have the movement of the body. So it is distinguished from dream, right? Because in the dream, we also are, are moving, or, or, or at least we're thinking that we are moving. We imagine that we are moving, but we are not, right? We are uh, laying there on the bed, right? So and so uh, distinct from, from dream, because in, in the case of a natural somnambulism, uh, there is locomotion during sleep, as the example that I gave, right? So, and also the loss of a remembrance of what happened, because the guy who did it all the right wrote it, that is sermon for example at night or the scientist that is, did uh, accomplish it that uh, um, let's say the um, something in his laboratory at the next day when when they wake up they don't remember of what they have done during the night right so that is a, a characteristic of natural somnambulism Uh, the lens uh, gave here, here uh, a case of a young priest, right, who every night stood up uh, from bed, went to his desk, wrote sermon, and then went back to bed, right. So, and he he didn't. And at the next day, the only thing that, that he would see was the paper written in his desk, right. But he would not remember what he had done during the night, right. So that is interesting. And then uh, Dylan says that one day with some of his friends, uh, when he was, well, he, he got up from bed, he, he, he went to his desk, and then he was wrote, uh, writing a sermon, right? Then some friends of him put a, a cardboard, right, in front of his eye. And, it, and the guy continued uh, um, writing, right? Because uh, we know now by, by studying spiritism that uh, the guy is not is not seen with his physical eyes, right? But, well, he, as he is sleeping, probably he's doing that with his eyes shut, right? So he's he's seeing all of that. We we, we know by spiritism, study spiritism, that he see by his spirit, spirit, right? His spiritual body. So that's why. Um, putting any obstacle in front of his eye does not interrupt him from from writing right so this is a, a remarkable remarkable characteristic of a natural somnambulism right um, that uh, the land says that it proves the reality of the soul right because the body is doing uh, doing uh, all, all of that right writing or, or making experience in the laboratory but uh, uh, something uh, independent of the body that is conducting the body in this case right which is the soul that's why he says uh, it's too difficult to, to to comprehend such a phenomena if we we don't we do not accept the the reality of the soul right so uh, you see that uh delaney here is giving us lots of uh, arguments right to prove the existence of the soul and magnetism is one uh, of uh, most important we have natural somnambulism and we have also magnet magnetic somnambulism. So magnetic somnambulism is, is that provoked by magnetism. Here is the case that I, 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 I mentioned that is very close to, to the situation of hypnotism, right? Because hypnotism also is a, a type of a somnambulism, which is in the case of the magnetic, which is provoked by a um, hypnotizer upon his patient, right? So is, it is the same here, right? So hypnot uh, magnet and magnetic somnambulism and hypnotism is the same, right? And most often uh, the magnetism, magnetic somnambulism is characterized by a total sensitivity of the skin. So if, if the guy is, is hypnotized or magnetized by the agent, we say the, the hypnotizer, 
or the magnetizer, then the patient, um, you can uh, pinch here, pinch his, his skin, you can poke him and he, he doesn't feel not anything, right? So, he, and he does not, he or she does not wake up. The, the senses are, are absent here, here there from, 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 from his or her conscience, right? And also nor, nor, uh, no noise can, can be heard, right? You can make a, uh, well, let's say, um, for a, a default of a sound, sound body, for example, in, in the floor, on the floor and make a, a, a sound, but uh, the, the, the patient here does not he hear anything, right? So this is a state of a total insensitivity that uh, the line says here, right? But uh, that happens only what uh, happens on the exterior of such a patient, right? Such person, which is mag uh, who, who or is magnetized because there is a close connection with the patient, with the agent, which is the hypnotizer. So that, uh, um, the line says that even the slightest modulation of the voice of the agent, of the hypnotizer or magnetizer, uh, is, is, is heard, is, is, is heard by, by, by the patient, right? By, by the sonambulism, uh, the, the line says here, right? So sonambulism can hear even the slightest modulation of the voice of the of the uh, magnetizer. So that is, you see that there is a close connection with the, the two per, the two people, right? The, the agent and the patient. But the patient has no uh, relationship with everything which happens around around him, right, or her. So, and uh, also the sonambulant, which is the patient, feels more accurate, accurately. Uh, then in the normal state, which is the part of his body that is sick? Then there is some in, in particular cases, right? Uh, right? Where the slumberland, uh, if he is uh, or, or she is sick, for example, she can uh, look in, in inside the, uh, her body and see which organ has the illness, right? Because again, She's uh, in the in the state of somnambulism. She's not seeing with the, her physical eyes, right? He's seeing with the he, with her peri spirit, and for the peri spirit, as we know from studying spiritism, a matter is not an obstacle, right? To 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 to, to look at or or to, to to go through, right? So there are there are even cases the land says of a transposition of the sense, right? So. You see, for example, someone that, uh, that, uh, that there are cases which is mentioned on the on the uh, spiritist literature uh, of uh, a man, for example, that you put a book on on his belly and then he reads what is what is written on the book. Right? And the, the book is in his belly; it's not in front of his eye, right? In, but in that case, he is in that somnambulistic uh, state, right? So that's important to say. And then um, uh, this man also uh, can 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 happen without the olfactory organ or hearing without the ear, right? So uh, this is a, 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 the case of a transposition of the senses. And let me give give you us a, a, an example of a researcher who puts a watch behind the head of a somnambulant, right? So out, out of her field of view. She was in a somnambulistic state, right? So then the, the clock is here behind his neck, her neck, right? And then uh, the researcher asked, well, what are you seeing now? And then she, she said, well, at first she said, why? Well, I'm seeing something that shines. But then he, she ends up saying that uh, I'm seeing a watch, right? And the watch was behind her neck, right? So it was not in front of her eyes. And then the, 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 the researcher asked, well, and uh, which time it does the, the clock is, uh, is, 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 is announced now, right? So she, she's, she answered correctly, the time which was set on the clock. And then he goes there and, and changes, right? The, the point of the, of the clock. And so the hour change, right? Suppose that it was eight, eight at nine, then he changes to midnight, right? Then ask her, well, now, 
which time we have now on, on, uh, on the clock? And then she answered correctly. Right? So this is to prove, uh, actually, the line is, is, is proving here that it is not with the physical eyes in this case that uh, um, the, the, that the woman was seen, right? But uh, with the, the soul, right? In the, in the somnambulistic state. So in the, at the end of the day, he's trying to prove it again the, the, the existence of the soul, which is independent of the body, right? So that's another example of the magnetism. And then we, we, we come here to my hypnotism, right? Which is a kind of a, a, mag, a magnetic somnambulism, right? So uh, it, this is the case that we, 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 we always see in the movies, for example, right? The individual, uh, if you, are, you put an object in front of the eyes of an individual, right? The patient, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, saying saying here and then that patient or individual stares at uh, stairs fixed there uh, uh, at their the, a bright object then the nervous fatigue uh, the lamb says induces a peculiar sleep peculiar because is the somnambulist is right so the, the person is hypnotized and then again as as uh, as as happened with the magnetism uh, magnetic somnambulism, uh, there is a partial or total insensitivity of the body, but and then the person has a tendency to maintain any position given to the limbs. Right? For example, the hypnotizer, let's say, the patient is hypnotized, then uh, the 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 um, the hypnotizer uh, raises the the the, the the arms of, of the, the patient and then uh, let uh, and then the person uh, maintain this position for hours right and the, we will not be uh, able to do that right because sometimes or or we will will be tired right then we will um, we'll, our arm will our arm will will will, will go down but in, in such case it would remain hours in that position right so that is a, a kind because there is a kind of insensitivity of the body, and then the hypnotize becomes an unconscious automaton, automaton, right? So uh, Delan says and preserves for days or weeks the traces of this automatism. What is the meaning of preserving for days or weeks, right? Is because um, he can give some orders, for example, to that uh, pa to the patient. Uh, well, uh, he, he can say, well, uh, three days from now, you 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 will do you you will go uh, you will raise from from your table, for example, and open the window, right? And th then three uh, three days later, at the, that exact time that the hypnotizer said, the person do the, the action that was uh, uh, was given by the hypnotizer, right? And also during the uh, when uh, the person is hypnotized, the hypnotizer can say say to the patient, "You look old, right?" And then uh, to a hypnotized woman, for example, right? And and soon her walk, her feelings uh, are those of an elderly woman, right? And then now then after that he says, "Well, now you are a little girl, right?" Then she takes on the speech manner and gesture of a child, right? So a small girl, right? So this is what hypnotism is about, right? So this is what about uh, magnet, magnetic somnambulism is about. And then uh, here's an example, right, uh, which I gave you, uh, the, the suggestion for an order which must be fulfilled um, later, right? Or indefinitely in this case, right? So the easiest to produce it, the lung says, is, is sleep. And then the hypnotizer says to the patient, right? tomorrow at the three o'clock you will sleep. So it, it is very dangerous to do that, right? Because suppose that the patient, the, the, the day after, at three o'clock, she's driving, for example. Right? She would sleep at that time. Right? It would be very dangerous. So it's just an example here, right? So uh, it is. It is therefore, uh, Delan says, with an absolute certainty that it, we conclude it by the existence of the soul, right? And such conclusion conclusion is affirmed by all these experiences, right? Either regarding natural somnambulism, magnetic magnetic somnambulism, or hypnotism, which is the same as magnetic magnetic somnambulism, right? So. 
then he, he comes here to an and general theory he say he, he say right so he said that oh we also have a, um, that situation where uh, there are states of that are produced by anesthetics right such as chloroform or ether for example if you are going to through a sur uh, surgery for example right so we are uh, we have we receive this anesthesia, right? So in such states, also there is a kind of um, emancipation of the soul, right? So, uh, and Gidelane give, he, give us here an example of a doctor who was operating a leg for a, uh, of a breast cancer, right? So uh, what surprises him is that during the operation, the legs, which is, was there, lay on the, the, the table, the surgery table, it was unconscious, uh, of course, but then she started to 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 to, to tell to tell him. She, she, she started to say that she was seeing what was happening at the house of a friend of her, right? So, and he was there the, during the, the surgery. And what surprised the doctor is that, uh, let's say, the next day, when uh, he talked to the friend of that woman. Uh, her friend said that she was doing exact, exactly what the, the woman was seeing at the moment of the surgery, right? So of the operation. So what happened here? Well, while he was uh, uh, there on, on the surgery table, uh, he, she, her soul emancipated from her body. What we Kardec says emancipation of the soul, right? So it, it's a kind of out out of a body, out of a body experience, right? She that she had, and then she went and in her soul with her pair of spirit, she went to her friend's house, her friend's house, and then she saw there what her friend was was doing. Then she she told that right and, and to to the doctor, and so. Every uh, everything uh, in every time she was unconscious, right? So uh, that is a, an example, right? So you see that uh, somnambulism, hypnotism, uh, uh, and anesthesia, all all of the, uh, all of them have some uh, effects that uh, proves the existence of the soul. And that's what the land is trying to to convince us here, right? And he's he's convinced for for sure. So. Then he says that in all these uh, three categories of phenomena, uh, the three categories, the magnetic somnambulism, hypnotism, chemical anesthesia, right? So uh, it is easy to highlight the following characteristic, he says. First, insensitivity of the body, right? Second, loss of memory upon awakening. The person does not, for example, that woman that was there on the surgery table, uh, for sure he, she, didn't, she didn't remember what what was happening when he was uh, she was there right uh, during the surgery so the loss of memory upon awakening and then the second sight the second sight is the situation that i, I mentioned right because on the state of the, when the soul is emancipated the person does not see with his uh, his or her physical eyes right he, he see with his very spirit his spiritual body that's what we call the second sight, right? Second sight, for example, is the case when, for example, a medium sees a spirit, right? You are there with the medium, then the medium suddenly says, why am I looking someone at your side? You, you, you look at your side, you, you, you see nothing, right? So she's not looking with his, the medium is not looking with her, his or her physical eyes, right? He's looking with his very spirit, which is the second sight, we, we, we say, right? So then the existence of the soul is experimentally proven by all the facts of magnetism, hypnotism, anesthesia, and all of the uh, other um, uh, examples that arguments that we already seen, right? And regarding memory, right? regarding uh, independence of force, uh, all, all the arguments that uh, Delaney presented to us until now. So. At, at this second, at the end of the second part of, of the book, then we we know that the the, the soul exists, right? So it really exists. But then on the third part of the book, uh, the line is going to prove that the soul is immortal. Right? We as soul are immortal. So that's what he's going to uh, doing here, and in the third part. 
So he he he, he say uh, he started by mentioning the materialist again, right? Because materialist says, well, uh, now we 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 must by all the arguments that the land gave, we must uh, we must admit that there is a in man a distinctive a directive force, right? Which is the soul. But such a, a directed force, which is the soul, is distinguished with the, uh, with the body, right? meaning that when uh, they accept that we have a soul directing our body, but they say that when we die, the soul also dies. Right? So at the end of the day, they are not convinced, right? They are saying that <laughs> everything is matter, and we when we die, everything is, is over, right? So. Uh, but then Dylan says, but faced with the great question of the immortality of ourselves, we do not hesitate, right? We, we spiritists, we say, yes, right? uh, uh, the, the soul is immortal. And we have lots of, of evidence of existence of the soul after death, right? So then he, he, uh, he comes to spiritism, right? Where he, 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 he says that, uh, the ignorant or the wise can form a conviction uh, through spiritism that uh, um, the soul is immortal, right? The soul exists and is immortal. So then uh, we are going to to, to go here um, faster uh, regarding this history of spiritism because I, I think you already know uh, the spiritism had basically two phases, right? The phases, the phase where Kardec was studying the spiritist phenomena, and then he he uh, he he wrote right all, all the, the the books regarding spiritism, the spiritist book, then the medium's book, and and so on and so forth, right? And then the second second phase uh, uh, happened happened when scientists is, is, started to study the spiritual phenomena right? after Kardec until the beginning of the 20th, the 20th century, right? So this is the, the first, uh, the, the two big phases of spiritism. And uh, so now, uh, nowadays, uh, we don't have any, any doubt right? regarding the existence of the soul and its immortality. Right? So here going here, uh, talking about the first uh, uh, manifestation of a, a spiritist phenomena, right? So knocks on the house and uh, of a family in the in Hyde, in the village of Hydeville, New York. Then um, the family the, the, starts to to communicate with the spirit that were was um, accompanied uh, that knocks. Then uh, they, they a dialogue uh, happens, right? Because uh, between the fam among the family and the spirit, the spirit which was trying to, to, to communicate with them, right? So then uh, after that, they start to, uh, to communicate with the spirit through a table, right? So people would gather around the table, would put the hands up over on the table without touching it, right? Just here on the, on the table and then ask questions. And then um, the table would answer to those questions uh, by a, by knocking, right? By by, by blowing uh, the, the the floor, uh, the table would would be raised by itself, and then would knock it on the floor. And then one knock would, for example, would mean yes. Two knocks would be no. Or if you think about the letter of the alphabet, one knock would be a, two b, and so on and so forth. Right? So it's a, it's a very burdensome uh, way of communicating that. Then after that, uh, then we have the the, the case of a rota rotating table, tables, right? The, which you, uh, went from America to Europe, and then at that time, Kardec starts to study, right? So, but the the way of of uh, communicating was improved over time. At the point that now you don't need any table or any kind of uh, instrument, right? Just uh, the the medium. Uh, 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 grasps uh, uh, a pen or a pencil, put on on, on a piece of uh, a sheet of a paper, and then he starts writing. He or she starts writing, right? So this is the very easy way which is are used today. And all of that Kardec is explained to us on the Medium's book, right? Which is written before uh, after the Spiritist book, and then. Uh, 
that was the first phase of spiritism. And the second phase, um, many scientists from Germany, from France, and few from France, right? Most from Germany from, and from, from England start to study the, the spiritist phenomenon, right? Uh, like William Crookes, for example, who was a chemist. And uh, also in Germany, Germany, we have uh, some scientists like the astronomer Friedrich Zellner, Zellner. And then in France, we have a uh, name such as Camille Flammarion, which was a spiritist, uh, Victor Hugo, which was uh, the, the, the writer, and Madame de Girardin, right? So they also carried out that investigation on the spirit phenomena. That was the second phase. And so what is the conclusion, right? The conclusion of all that is that the, the soul really exists, the soul pre-exists the body, the soul survives the body. So the soul is immortal, right? So, and from all these uh, phenomena, Kardec, um, well, he, 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 le he left to, to us this, the spiritism, spiritism um, doctrine, let's say, right? Spiritism, spiritist doctrine. And what are the basic principles of the spiritism, right? So there are five main, main principles, right? First, um, the spiritism advocates the existence of a God, right? So the initial and unique engine or engine of the universe, the land says, right? He, he said an engine because he was an engineer, right? Actually, the unique creator of the universe, right? Secondly, spiritism demonstrated the existence of the soul. Right? So the soul exists, right? The, the, uh, the conscious and mortal self created by God. Third, spiritism advocates the law of progress for all spirits. So we progress through our many lives that we have right on earth or on um, on other worlds right then for such progress we must um have uh, lots of existence right so the that's why the fourth uh, basic principle is the plurality of existence right uh, or reincarnation right we must reincarnate because it's not possible in just one life to, to, to accomplish all the progress that we, we, we should accomplish, right? And then the fifth uh, basic principle, which is the basis for, for uh, basis for mediumship, is that um, in the spiritism, we have the communication between living and the dead, right? So between the incarnate people with discarnate people. So to summarize, spiritism is a progressive science, right? And is based on the revelation of the spirits because uh, many of the, the books written by Kardec was, the spiritist book, for example, was a series of answers to questions that Kardec posed to them, right? So that's why it's the revelation of the spirits. And uh, knowing the spiritist philosophy, uh, we have some benefit, right? So that's why Delanis uh, concludes here, the third part of the book, by saying that the spiritist philosophy dilates uh, our heart, uh, considers the unfortunate as our brother, right? And to whom we owe the support of a charitable hand, right? So he talk, he's talking here about love and about solidarity, about fraternity, right? So. That is the, the, something very important uh, that the spiritism uh, bring it to all of us. So with, with this, I conclude my presentation today of the three parts of the spiritism before science. Thank you for, for the opportunity again. Roberto, I am so impressed. Really wonderful <laughs> the way that you presented. It's amazing because it's a, a very nice document for other people yeah. know a little bit more about spiritism before the science. Yeah, and I was a little bit intrigued when you are talking about hypnotism, about anesthesia. Mm. And uh, I was thinking, perhaps, that, that we could say that Delan was the first researcher scientist of the spiritist phenomena. Because I didn't mm. see this before, mm. before you. Right. What do you think? 
Yeah, you know, uh, Delaney was a great uh, scholar, right, regarding the spiritism, and uh, he actually, um, uh, Elsa, he by himself, I think he by himself, he, he, he did not lots of research. All these cases that he are mentioned here uh, was done for by other scientists. But he was one that studied very, uh, in a very profound way, in a very deep way, the spiritism. I would say that the, from, the, from the three main uh, spiritists after Kardec, which is Leon Denis that we studied last year, Gabriel Delaney that we are studying this year, and I, I'm, 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 I think that you are going to think about Camille Flammarion for next year. <laughs> from these three, I would say that the Delaney was the one that uh, was most, uh, let's say, close to 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 to, to the um, to the um, all the work of Kardec's work, because we know that by his, well by reading the books of Leon Denis, that he was he he he, he followed Kardec for sure. But he has he he had also some spiritualist uh, bias, right? So we you can see uh, that, for example, in the Great Enigma, for example. And uh, Camille Flamme Marion uh, was a scientist, astronomer. He also um, followed the Kardec, but uh, he had also he was also very influenced by science of his time, and that happens. Uh, on the beginning of the 20th century, then there, there is a and there is some works of him which uh, goes more on the side of the science than the spiritism. So, Delaney, no, Delaney was all the time he was strictly um, uh, faithful to to to, 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 to his spiritism from Kardec. Mm -hmm. That I would that I would say by reading right of the, the works of this this man, but. All of them have great contributions uh, to his Wow, people. we are nearly the end of our our live, but Faye has a question here. Hmm. Would you say that the land expanded Kardec's work? You already said no. Yes, yes, I would say there is a book here which which I I, I think that it's uh, well. Uh, uh, Delaney has not many works to, to talk about, right? He has, I, I think he has five books on it. He has, he has written only five books uh, regarding spiritism. And there is one of them which is very interesting. The name is uh, 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 the, the, the Soul Evolution. In that, in that book, which is very interesting, I I understand that that is great contribution to to spiritism because there and he expands Kardec's work because there he talks about uh, actually about psychology, about how we think, uh, how we 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 feel, how uh, talks about the will, about the memory, about the superficial memory, which is something that happened yesterday the deep memory about, about uh, let's say, the, our, our previous life. So he expanded there the concept of the spirit by uh, uh, being, bringing some, some, some psychology concepts. There, I think there is, there is, uh, there is a great contribution from, from the land. Yes. Oh, Roberto, would you like to say thank you so much for your wonderful contribution today for this series that we will have once a month the first Sunday, 3 p.m. Brazil time, 6 p.m. in London time, and European people can watch in the Times uh, these uh, presentations that will be next month because uh, Munir had a problem with the power cut in his area that we have a hu huge storm here in Curitiba. Mm -hmm. Now I was praying for my power, not cut. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> you could be finishing on your own. Mm -hmm. And uh, next month, I don't have it here with me exactly the ones that we will speak next month. Can I see quickly if I can show to you? Uh, I don't know if I have it here or not. Um, no, uh, yes. 
Can I see quickly here which one will be next month? Uh, Feb February, March, April. Humberto Schubert. Mm. Humberto Schubert will be with us um, the first Sunday of April. So I hope you all can share with your friends and be with us because we have so a few lectures in English about the precursors, the ones that work uh, uh, with Kardec and after Kardec, spreading the spiritist teachings as Gabriel Delany. So I hope, Roberto, you will be with us next year for the new series. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps your idea about Camille from Marion will be great. We will see about the, the hosters. Mm -hmm. And um, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here with us, Faye, Danielle, uh, the other people that I couldn't say, see everyone here now, but there are more. But you all received our thank you so much for being with us and spread the word. Okay? Thank you, Roberto, your final, final words. Thank you again, uh, Elza, for this opportunity to talk about Gabriel Delan. And uh, I hope that we keep seeing the, the, the next presentation about him. What will um, Humberto is talking about? Which one? I, I have no uh, okay. with me the document because I am not in, in my point of work. Mm. As okay, I said before, okay. <laughs> Munir okay. is the host. He has everything. I'm sorry because we have a lot of things to present. But at least we will share before uh, one week okay. before I start sharing the post poster and uh, on the day or the day before the link on the YouTube as usual. Okay. okay. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Have a nice starting yeah, mm -hmm. week tomorrow and a nice and beautiful end of today, Sunday. God bless you Thank all. You. Thank you, Victor. Thank you.